I will have Red act in a support role here and become our major import exporter also. I will mine, but I'll have to use the yellow's rail line to get to that large coal deposit, so it's going to cost me an additional time unit. Moving Red ahead of the old one, but can mine one type of resource, so we'll get six coal, pour it into our warehouse for future sale. Then we can distribute those export revenues to the other players to purchase diverse military units. We'll have Blue generate some gold for purchasing military units by farming. And Blue will place a corn farm and a sheep farm, which will cost two units and gain two gold. And that'll be enough for us to either purchase an airship or an armored train. I'll have Yellow recruit some help. Yellow already has a lot of victory points. I'm not worried about that player, but I am worried about Blue, who doesn't have a phosphate yet. So I will choose to take Ferdi Kassan to place two farms of your choice. We can use that near the end of the game, and I'll give this to the Blue player. We'll shift everyone down, and we will get Dagmar Kraus. You may double up on the placement of one type of farm. Wow, we should really get that over to the blue player also. Recruiting help costs the player one point, but they can go again. I don't think I'm going to build any tracks with yellow soon, so I will sell off my iron and my coal to gain two gold in preparation for buying a train in the near future. And that will move us ahead by one, allowing the old ones to go onto a non-illuminated space. All they have out right now is a zombie, which doesn't move too often. I say that before I draw, watch me draw two in a row. But we will need to start revealing some of these other old ones soon, because we're getting past the halfway point, and we don't want to leave any face down where they get easy victory points. The zombie will not move, so I was not completely wrong, and it will not move again. The old ones will move onto an illuminated space, and let's see if this prep is paid off. Reveal the old one in the lowest numbered hex, and we'll only have to draw the two movement cards. The lowest numbered hex is currently 26, and we will see another zombie worth one victory point and three health. Now if we draw a zombie card, we're going to have two of them moving. And we did not. Let's try again and see if they move. And they will not move again. Thank goodness zombies are slow. Yellow is up next, followed by all of our other players. The zombies are one hex away from the blue rail. And armored cars and infantry are good against zombies, so we might have the blue player attack them. The blue player does need victory points, but we have yellow up right now. We don't have enough money to really buy units. Placing farms wouldn't help us much. We can only gain one gold because we only have one type of farm available to us because we're in the outback only. So I'll go ahead and prep, get all of our cubes back to headquarters. And that will allow yellow to go again before the old ones. The blue player has a lot of rails over here on the western part of the map. So we should get a train purchased. So when old ones move on to our track lines, we can use it against them. We'll spend one time unit and four gold to purchase our first armored train and add it to our barracks. Moving the blue player ahead, making it red's turn. I'll have red prepare by getting all of the cubes back to headquarters. Moving ahead one unit, which will allow for a, another red turn. Red will export two coal to gain two gold, which they will give to the yellow player, bringing the yellow player up to a total of four. And that will bring us to the blue player again. I'll have the blue player prep for possible end game scoring needs, recruit help, and recruit Dagmar Kraus. 
That way I can double up on the placement of one type of farm at the end and that'll work well with Ferdy Kassan, which they already have. We'll replace her with Alexander Proust. Your armored car units can take three damage before they are eliminated. Well, that would be good for the blue or the red player. They both have armored cars. Blue player used up a time point, taking us to yellow. Yellow has a nice amount of track covering up that eastern border. We'll prepare for the old ones coming at us. Purchase an armored train at the cost of four gold. And we'll place that armored train in the barracks. And that will activate the old ones twice. But first they go in a non-illuminated space. And we'll see if these zombies are going to move. Card number one, they will not. And card number two, our last card, they will not move. So we need to reshuffle the deck. The old ones will move again onto another illuminated space. And we will have no event. That is spectacular. They still get to draw two cards for movement. And the zombies will not move. And the second card, ah, they will move this time. And direction number six and clockwise. Six is up and to the left or northwest. They won't move that direction, so we'll have to use the clockwise to determine. This zombie here, the furthest on the right, is one, two, three, four, four away from both of those, and five away from the port. So if we started up here and worked our way around, this space here would be one step closer to both of them. So that zombie will move. The other zombie has a farm three away, and these are four away, so it's going to go in that direction. And now come all the way around to this space here. That's the first one that is closer to that sheep farm. And that brought the zombies a lot closer. This zombie here is right on the blue rails, and the other zombie is only one away from the yellow rail. We will need to build further into the outback here so we can reach these other old ones and reveal them. First up, we have yellow. That zombie moved into range. So we will attack and we'll use infantry and artillery. The infantry are good and the artillery are poor. Can't use the train because they're not on the tracks. And Professor Guillaume will keep this to a one-time unit attack, which will allow yellow to go again before the old ones. Placing our attack here, the zombie on hex 20. And that zombie has three health. We have to try and eliminate this zombie with this attack because if we retreat or withdraw, it will gain all of its life back. Again, we have infantry and artillery here, and only the airship would be effective. Wow, that is a lucky card. We have artillery and infantry and nothing against us. Yellow is proving to be a very difficult opponent for these old ones. And can we finish them off? Oof. No. One damage and a loss of sanity. That's okay. We have Franz Newman ready to help someone go back to the barracks. Let's finish these zombies off. No. Another damage and another loss of sanity. We'll return those infantry back to our barracks and we'll lose a second sanity, leaving us one remaining. Come on, yellow. I was bragging about how good you were. And we have a double nil. An armored car will not help us. Another damage and another sanity loss. Now we're in trouble. That's another damage and our last sanity. We can still fight without sanity, but if we are required to lose sanity again, we will lose. And any units that are damaged, if you have to withdraw because you don't have sanity, those units are destroyed, even if they don't meet their health total as far as damage goes. I'm not desperate to beat the old ones yet, so I think I will go ahead and choose to withdraw without taking any chances. That way, the infantry can return safely to the barracks. And unfortunately, the zombie will shrug off that damage and be back up to its total of three health. It's time for the blue player to regroup. Recover all those cubes back to the headquarters. 
and bring us over to the red player. I'll have the red player strengthen their armored cars by recruiting help from Alexander Proust or Proust. Your armored car units can take three damage before they're eliminated, and we'll let the red player keep that. We'll place Alexander with Kitchener. Take one personality card from the display. The red player will get to go again. That was only a single time unit used. I will have the red player launch an attack on one of those zombies. And for this attack, we will use the armored car and the airship. The armored car can move two hexes off rail. And don't forget we have Alexander Proust, who gives our armored car units the ability to take up to three damage. Because we're using armored cars and airships, it's only going to cost us one time unit to launch the attack. We'll be launching our attack here. We are two hexes off of our rail, so we don't have to use another player's rail to get there. And I'm hoping for a good draw. The zombie has four health and we have to take it out completely or it will regenerate its health at the end of the combat. Armored car and airships versus zombies. That's well, a good start. The armored car will do one damage. All right, let's keep the momentum going. Well, we're going to take one wound, lose his sanity, and the armored car will do another wound though. We'll take a wound, lose his sanity. Sanity is not much of a concern since we have four, thanks to Count Iago. We're halfway there. Hopefully we can avoid any more wounds on our armored car. We have a double blank. Too bad we couldn't bring infantry with us, but no bad effects for us. Another double blank. Another infantry success that we don't have. The armored car will score another hit, but it will take another wound and we will lose another sanity. We take a wound, we lose a sanity. I have a tough choice to make. Because if I take another wound, my armored car will be destroyed and I'll have to buy another one. They cost three gold. I have two already here in the warehouse. It wouldn't take too long to get the armored car back. It may be worth the risk to get that zombie with four health off the board. Because thanks to that wound, we're only one away from taking the zombie out too. I'll take the risk and keep going. Oh, train, infantry but nothing bad. And here is the bad news. We are gonna lose our armored car and a sanity. That would be the third wound on the armored car, which will take it out, leaving the airship there all by itself. And we lose a sanity. That means we have one remaining. And I think I'll go ahead and just keep pushing my luck until we lose that sanity, and maybe we'll get lucky and the airship will land a wound. Let's keep it going until something occurs. Oh, the next one was the armored car. No luck for us there. And here we are. We're gonna lose a sanity. That wound will not apply to the airship, only the airship symbol does. That is the last sanity we had. If another one comes up, we'd be forced to withdraw and defeat but the airship does not have any wounds on it yet, so it would not be destroyed if we drew a card that required another sanity loss. But if I take a wound and lose a sanity, which happens sometimes, my airship will be lost, and that would be another cost to incur to get it back. So I'll, I'll go ahead and withdraw and return back to the barracks. We came close, but we didn't make it, so those will come off because it is a zombie, taking us over to the blue player now. The blue player has infantry and armored car, which are both good against zombies. And that zombie's on my rail line, so I can use my armored train to go after it also. Yeah, let's do that. Let's attack that zombie with the blue player. The blue player will launch an attack, and we'll take everybody. We only have the one infantry and the one armored car, but we're also taking our tank. So those two will cost us two to complete the attack action. Again, the train does not add any to the time unit expenditure. 
the blue will move ahead too. And we're launching the tech right here along the blue rail line. We can always withdraw at the last minute with Corporal Jones. Let's start this second battle with a zombie. And the armored car will do one wound. Again, we're off to a good start, but we started off good last time too. Another good result, our infantry that's there will cause one wound, bringing us to the halfway point. Things are going really well. Another armored car symbol means we inflict a third wound in a row. Now we're down to just one remaining successful attack to defeat the zombie. Can we do four in a row? Well, no, but it still hasn't wounded us. And there we go. The train and the infantry. We've done it, that's more than enough, and we took no wounds or sanity loss during the entire combat. The zombie was easily eliminated by the blue player, removing that threat from the board, bringing all units safely back with zero battle damage, and our blue player has a trophy worth two victory points. The blue player needed that because they still lack a phosphate. Yellow will recruit help, and we will take Desta Danger in preparation for temples showing up, because this will allow us to remove one, even though we don't get the victory points, especially late in the game if we flip over some of those level three tiles and it's a massive temple, then we can just destroy it in one shot with this card, denying the old ones those victory points. That cost a yellow one, which will activate the old ones, and they will move on to a non-illuminated space. They only have the one zombie visible. We'll see if it moves. In that case, it does not. And the second card, also no movement from the zombie. Now they do move onto an illuminated space, so we're gonna have a revelation. And hopefully it's not too awful. Reveal the old one in the lowest numbered hex. Step one space back on the time track. Very nice. So every player is going to move back one space. That's going to give us a little bit of extra time. Man, that guy just looks just really, really upset. Guess that's what happens when you join the old ones. The current lowest numbered hex would be 27 right here. So that old one is a Shogoth worth six victory points and has six health. Every player will step back one spot on the time track. That does not affect the old one player. Let's see if our Shogoth will move. We'll have to draw two cards and it will move once direction five clockwise. Five would be in the southwesterly direction. Where is the closest point of interest for the Shogoth? We have a port and an unblighted farms here. Some unblighted farms here. So these are one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So these two farms are the closest. And it wants to move in this direction, which would make it still four away, so it's not gonna do that. So we would turn clockwise. It would end up here with the zombie. We draw a second movement card. And this time, the Shogoth will remain still. Thanks to that Revelation card, we'll get a couple more turns before the old ones will go again, beginning with the yellow player. But before we do that, I failed to notice that the zombie should have moved also along with the Shogoth. Again, direction five and clockwise. The zombie is three away from these farms, four from that port, and four from that farm over there. And it would want to move in this direction, which is no good. When we continue around to here, and that would move it closer to both of those farms, which kind of helps us out because they are not grouped together now. That would have been a much harder attack if they were both in the same hex. And another correction, not too bad. We just need to shift everyone down and draw a replacement card. Donald McDonald. Take two iron, two coal, and two gold from the supply. That's an extremely useful card. We will use these extra turns we've gained to prep for building more tracks further into the outback to those level three 
old ones, I will do the import export action and receive an iron and a coal for one time point. Moving us to red player's turn. 